affliction league might go down as the biggest and juiciest league of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Divine! What? Wait, what? Oh, Holy what? shit! Mirror! Mirror! We got a mirror! Oh, oh my god! Hi, I'm Daniel. <laughs> In my Path of Exile League reviews, I usually focus on the league itself, not the patch. But this league was a bit different, and I also want to talk about the meta after my initial review later in the video. To give you some info, Affliction League was the 3.23 expansion for Path of Exile. It started on December 8th, 2023 for PC and released shortly after on console. The trailer teased us with a new area to explore, new bosses, new NPCs, newest sentences, and even the return of our beloved Chaos, the Ultimatum NPC. I played Affliction quite a lot the first month and then slowly stopped as I realized the league wasn't really my thing for the builds and content I played. In short, I like blasting a lot, but extreme juicing like 80% deli maps and you know, magic finding and all that jazz isn't really my thing. Because Headhunter becomes this pinnacle item to even do this content or, you know, to actually survive it. But I played Tornado Shot, enjoyed myself as always, because the base game is just amazing. Those were just some rough infos on what I even did during the league. Going back to Affliction now, let's start a review and jump into gameplay. Let's start off with finding the league in the first act, as it usually is. You find a hole into the Viridian Wildwood right after going into a new area. The first time you enter it, it seems as though an entrance opened up for the player, allowing us to enter the Wildwood as if it draws us into its tight, thorny grip. Wouldn't be the first time that us as players have been tempted by power. Am I right, Exiles? <laughs> already a cool opening and atmosphere of going in the first time. Wait, that sounds wrong when I say it like this. Hold up, after being inside the Wildwood, you may notice it's incredibly dark. You can see around your character and can get rid of the fog or bugs by walking into it. This has a limit that can be felt after a few runs, but doesn't have a fixed number or value that the player can see. The particles around the player shrink and are an indicator, but are quite vague. During your exploration, you find monsters, classic, old league mechanics like Scourge and Harvest, which I always love seeing. You can even encounter bosses unique to this area, more on that in a bit. You may also find other characters, NPCs, which allow you to get a Wildwood Ascendancy for no additional cost beside a quest. Well, maybe your sanity, because it was incredibly difficult finding them again after I did their quest. Speaking of quests, to advance the Ascendancy to get more points, you need to do their quests, which are fairly simple and easy. I usually played the Primalist, and it usually said something about kill 500 monsters of this type. The last quest tells you to find and beat the King of the Mists, which is the boss of this league. But other than that, we were given free power and a lot of power for free during this entire league. In total, there are three Wildwood Ascendancy classes. Each class offers unique abilities such as weapon tinctures for the Warden of the Magi, curse skills for the Warlock of the Mists, and charms with random passive skills for the Wildwood Primalist. First off, curses can be casted and do something that we haven't seen before, like putting two enemies next to the boss you curse, which is kind of interesting, but nothing I was really interested in. Then we have tinctures, which grant powerful effects when they're equipped into flask slots and can be toggled on or off at will. Personally, not a fan of having to get rid of a flask slot, but I'm happy it was part of the league. I'm sure people had fun with different ways of scaling their builds. I think the self-ignite build with Fulcrum, like the unique staff, used one of those tinctures. And at last, charms are something I fell in love the second I saw them. Passives like extra projectiles that are instantly rewarding and incredibly powerful. Going back to the NPCs, there's a secret vendor that had an inventory full of uniques. He was extremely rare to find, and to be honest, an entire inventory full of uniques is a rare sight to see in Path of Exile as a whole. But how did you buy stuff in the Wildwood? To buy things, you need wisps. Wisps were also the major driving
driving force behind this league. In short, wisps are gathered in the wildwood by just walking into them. You suck them all up and after leaving the wildwood, random enemies in the instance or map are powered up, thus increasing their rewards in different ways. The yellow vivid wisps grant an item quantity bonus, the purple wild wisps add an item rarity bonus and the blue primal wisps makes monsters drop additional currency items. But in typical RPG fashion, the more wisps or juice you gathered, the more loot you get. But that also means the enemies become much stronger. And we're talking ridiculous amounts. So let's talk about the difficulty part. In my opinion, the whole thing was a bit whack and needed more time cooking. First off, Affliction was too difficult and not rewarding enough during the acts. In the endgame, it was extremely difficult and useless until you already had a great build. After having a good build and feeling comfortable, I didn't see a reason doing it. My playstyle is die less and blast more, and that doesn't really work with a tornado shot build, which already is glass cannon E, you know, it, it struggles with defense. It's enough for legion farming, but not legion plus delirium plus affliction on top of that. And my builds are around 50 to 100 divines, not multi-mirror stuff. This is usually because I can't make this much currency in a reasonable amount of time. So affliction for me as a player was more of a curse than a gift. For me, it made a map much longer because enemies became tankier, but also made me die more often and in the end, I got a few more chaos per map out of it. I understand that if you properly juice and get a proper build, you go from multiple chaos to like multiple divines to like insane wealth. But this was just like not obtainable for me as the average player. On top of that, you would need a ton of investment into your maps to get more wisps. The more wisps, the more loot you get long term, but this also bumps the difficulty up even higher. And at that point, you need a god tier triple S build or cheese it in some way to even be able to withstand the onslaught of enemies. Of course, you could lower your map tier and some people did that and they were just blasting their tier 7 maps. I'm also not a fan of that. I like seeing the minions pop up from the steering axe and I can blast them away. Just feels satisfying. And here is where I had difficulty deciding what this review would be about. On one side, higher difficulty, crazier builds and crazier content, which gives more loot, sounds like a good thing, but I somehow couldn't get into it. Maybe it was just me playing a bad build for that type of content. Tornado Shot just couldn't deal with it unless I spend more currency on it, but with minimum amount of time, you know, like full-time job, working out, etc., etc., and trying to make more than a video per month, I just didn't have enough energy and drive to play a lot more. I could have switched builds, yeah, but doing another act playthrough and then having to grind out a bad build until it becomes good, it just, it just doesn't sound fun. And to keep in mind, I only would do that to then blast more affliction. Even if the affliction blasting could have been fun, it just, the, the way to get to it just didn't sound fun. But again, maybe it was actually the one build that I just didn't find or didn't hear about. In short, this league was, I think, another learning experience to me. Maybe I have to accept that some builds are required to do certain content. Funny enough, I had the same experience in Sanctum League. I didn't like Sanctum at all, until I got a proper build and then I loved the league. Lately, it seems that more and more leagues are hyper-specific, requiring a type of build to really get a use out of it. Just look back to the previous league, which was the Trial of the Ancestors. If you had a glass cannon build in that league, you were stomped into the ground. For the future, I'll be more open-minded and try out different builds, especially a few weeks after a league start, because then, you know, the drive and attention is still on Path of Exile instead of any other game. And maybe I'll enjoy the league more with everyone else and not die with my glass cannon tornado shot build in Jungle Valley. Now for the end of the gameplay section, let's talk about the ultimate antagonist of the league, the King of the Mists. Just fucking great. I'm not even gonna bleep this. <laughs> Mysterious, dangerous, intimidating, and genuinely a really cool boss. The boss fight itself 
is a bit messy and random to find as in typical GGG style, but that might be on purpose for the sake of the character and this league. I tried finding him with my Tornado Shot build, and you can probably guess how that went. <laughs> there was a small likelihood of winning due to every attack dealing a lot of damage and dot pools swirling around on the ground. But I think, as with many bosses, you can just brute force your way through with a lot of damage but it wasn't worth it for me this late during the league. I did him much earlier in the league, I think like second week, with Gassy's SRS build, which was so good. I like the arena, overall visuals and music a lot more than the actual gameplay part, so that's why I put it in the section of the video. Still, love seeing bosses added to a new league. Oh, bosses, right. There was also a tree dude, an angry monkey, and that one boss they copy-pasted from one of the maps. They were also pretty solid. Nice surprises while going through the Wildwood and also shows what we can expect from Path of Exile 2 in terms of enemy design and quality. I think since many leagues now, we had great visuals and this league is no exception. High quality textures, lighting effects and great monster models all around. Of course, some of them are copy pasted from the main game, but still a nice mix overall. I do have one minor visual thing that bothered me a bit. It's the sheer amount of particles. Like, they are everywhere. Some are fine, but good lord, they turned up that notch to 11 this time. It felt like unnecessary visual noise. So if they can turn it back again, that would be nice. Now, I'm just a mere mortal when it comes to lore, not like our goddess Kitten Cat Noodle. So I'll keep myself brief. We had a great balance between not too much lore, like with the Ancestor League, but more than with Kalandra. So this might be the perfect balance. Lots of little pieces and additions to other leagues, old bosses, and even more mysteries were added to the world of Rayclast. I'm sure we will get some answers to some of those mysteries someday any day now. Probably not. <laughs> Jokes aside, there is one thing that really bothered me. For the love of God, make it so lore plays even when we walk away from it. Don't force us to stand there. GGG, the technology is there. We know it is because it was in Calandra League. Make this the new norm whenever this is added in a league. I want to listen to the many amazing voice actors and great lore, but not stand there for a solid minute. This one moment during my stream showed that sound is so incredibly important in Path of Exile. It's mine now. What the heck was that sound? Oh, hi! How are you doing? Dude, I was like wondering, that is not a normal sound. Great sound design and awesome music as always. Not as amazing as Sanctum, but still high up there when listening to it on its own. I will always turn up sound during the first few days in a new league. Only then you really get a feeling of it. Now let's get into the meta stuff, which is kind of new for my league reviews. First off, I'm not a huge player or big brain crafter. I do have my 6,000 hours and I would say I'm somewhat veteran, but if you throw me deep into Delve, I would be completely lost. With all of this in mind, I think the meta and the state of the entire game in 3.23 Affliction was fucking amazing. I didn't have so much fun with the league, I didn't play many builds, but god 
damn, I felt it when playing, trading, and grinding in the first four weeks. We had a complete meta shakeup, you know, with all the transfigured gems, and then you also don't get them from Heist anymore, now you have to do lab, so that also shook things up. Then we had incredible variety of how to make builds, which I don't do, but just being in the community was so fun, because people figured out new stuff all the time. This skill is busted, this skill is crazy strong, millions or billions of DPS, penance brand, do I need to say more? So many new variables made this just a fun league to play in, even if you weren't figuring out the strongest skill or new god tier unique, which is the finds of destiny, let's be honest. But there was one more thing, because feeling good being in a community is only part of it. You're also playing an RPG and need loot to power yourself up. I checked the numbers on PUE Ninja and looked back to the Ancestor League, I think for the average or semi-veteran player that play builds below 100 divines investment, this was an amazing league because everything was profitable. From uniques to flasks to invitations and so much more. Whatever you were farming or grinding, it felt worth it. And the economy rewarded that because so many people did affliction juicing, which was the biggest moneymaker, but they needed resources from other players in the economy. One thing I do not know too much about is crafting. My guess is it was also really good because lots of loot means you have the resources to craft items. You can then sell those items back to the players that were trying to do tier 16 mega juiced maps with affliction. If you are a crafter or are in the community, please let me know in the comments down below how crafting felt during the league. Now, I was a dirty tornado shot legion farmer for the majority of the league, okay? I'm sorry. But while I was running past every single affliction entrance in the hundreds of maps I ran, I felt the influence of the meta in a very positive way. Invitations sold a lot more, which mattered to me, who doesn't make dozens of divines an hour. And buying scarabs for my type of mapping was somewhat cheap and quick because there were a lot of items on the market. Will we ever have such an amazing meta again? I think it doesn't have to be this incredible, but I hope GGG listens to the players and understands what made this league so fun for so many players. Hopefully they figure out a way to implement that into the core endgame system in Path of Exile 2. It is time to conclude my Affliction League review. The league itself was a bit of a letdown due to the weird balance. I would have wished the beginning of the Wildwood during the act to be a lot easier. Later on in the endgame it felt incredibly punishing and not rewarding enough until you get that Headhunter or have invested a lot into your build, which at that point defeats the purpose of a league that was made to give you more loot. Still, this league made me learn that I should try a variety of builds, skills and combinations to really get more out of a league. But in a meta sense, I think this might have been the best league we have had in a very long time, even if I didn't play too much of it. It was great experiencing it with many streamers, players and the community as a whole. Thank you to everyone at Grinding Gear Games for another great league. And with this, my rating for Affliction League is a Stitch Inspire out of 10. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what was your favorite build during the league. And if you enjoyed so far, subscribe. And don't forget to stay hydrated, gamers.